So here in the build a Shopify app with Node and React, we can just skip here and set up your app. And let's open VS Code. And here I have my own project or a new project. Let's open the terminal and let's just set up the npm project. So npm init hyphen y to initialize a new project manager. And then we can just install React, React. DOM and then next.js. So install npm install react and then react type and DOM and then next.js or next. Press enter. And while we're waiting for that to be installed, let's create a new folder and let's just call it pages. And in this page, we're going to create a new file and let's call it index.js. And in this file, what we're going to do is to create a function. So constant index. And this is going to be an arrow function. Don't forget that. It's going to be parentheses and with semicolon. And inside of this, we're going to create a div. And let's just type welcome. And make sure that you export this function. So export default index. There you go. Hit save. And next up, let's create a server file. So create a new file. Let's call it server.js. And then what we're going to do is just to set up our server. So open your documentation we don't need to set that up we don't need to do this we don't need to do that and we need to install react react dom and we have created the following index file and we need to set up our package.json we can just skip that for now and we can just continue and embed our app to a shopify um store so open your stores and you know what let's also create a new app so here in the apps, we'll just create the app, should be public app. Let's just give it a name of Shopify or Node, Node Project. Doesn't really matter. And here we need to create an ngrok URL. So ngrok HTTP 3000. Let's just copy the URL. Let's open our browser again and just paste it here. Let's copy this, paste it in here and make sure that you type auth. Click create app. All right, let's open the app setup once again. And let's just double check everything. Up URL. All right, so let's go back to the documentation. And scroll back down. We have the following URLs. All right, so we need to use callback instead of off. Here, type forward slash callback. So again, off callback. Hit save. Am I going too fast? I apologize for that. But I don't want to spend much time with this because, yeah, it's just really simple. All right, so let's just copy this, create a new env file. Let's open VS Code, create a new file. Let's call it .env. Paste it here. Let's just copy the Shopify API key in our Shopify app setup. Copy the API key, go back to VS Code, paste it in here. Go back to the browser again, copy the API secret key, and paste it here. In the Shopify API scopes, we can just add another one, add comma, and type write underscore products. And for the Shopify app URL, make sure that you use the URL generated by Angrok. Paste it here. All right, so once again, make sure that you type or make sure that you paste the API key, the secret. Make sure that you set up your scopes and make sure that you set up the app URL, the Angrok URL. Paste it in here. We can just close this, we don't need that anymore. And next up is the server.js. So go back to the documentation. Let's just scroll down. And we need to install the following modules. Let's just copy this. Open your browser, open your browser, open your VS Code. Go back to the CND and just paste it here. Again, we need to install the Koa Shopify auth, koa.env to access our .env file. And we also need to use the Koa router and then the isomorphic fetch. So we can just install all of these modules and while that's installing, we can just go back to documentation and set up our server.js. So let's just copy this, go back to the VS Code, paste it here. And one thing that you notice that you might notice here is that now we're using the following module. So here we have the Shopify API. It's part of the Koa Shopify auth. If you install this, it will have the following API or Shopify API module as well. So you can use the Shopify, you can use the API version, you can use the custom session storage or session or session, yeah, session and so on and so forth. So this is where basically you can get everything. So Shopify API is where you can get 
everything you need to set up your Shopify app. So that being said, we can just continue and copy the following context. We need to initialize that, go back to VS Code and paste that here. So here we're using the following Shopify and then we're using the context and initialize it. And we're getting the API key from our ENV file. We're getting the API secret key from the ENV file, as well as the scopes, the host name, and the API version. We're using the API version coming from the Shopify API. And we're using the, we're setting up our embed app to true. And here we're using the default memory session storage or the built-in memory session storage created by the Shopify API. So if you if you just want to experiment, if you just want to know how to create Shopify app, this is where you can get started. This is why you're going to use. But if you're going to publish your Shopify app, you're going to make this production, then you're going to need you're going to need to create a custom Shopify or custom session storage. But I'm not going to cover that in this video. That's a lot of work. That's really complicated because yeah, you're gonna need to set up your database. You're gonna need to set up your memory session storage. So it's gonna take a lot of time. Maybe I'll create a video for that, but in this video I'll just set up or I'll just use the memory session storage. So we can just continue and below all of this, we can just start setting up our, our API or app. So I think we can just, you know what? Let's just move this above, like so. And then, and the reason why I'm moving it above is because I want to make sure that we're aligned. I don't want to be different because you guys might get lost. Like, oh, why is it here? Why is it there? So, yeah, you know what? Let's just continue. So next up is the app prepare. We just copy this, go back to VS Code, paste it here. And instead of this app prepare is where we're going to set up our authentication. So instead of that, we're going to use the COA, we're going to use the router, and then set up the following handle request. Paste it here. So first we have the following COA. We're using server, we're creating a router. So basically it's just the same. This time we're using the context to get the API secret key. And we're creating handle request for our routers. And then we're setting up our server. And I think we're almost done. We can just continue, scroll back down, and we need to set up our Shopify auth. Go back to VS Code and just paste that underneath of the server.js, like so. Let me just indent all of this properly. All right, next up is the routers. So we can just copy this, go back to VS Code, paste it underneath of the root. And next, we need to create the following variables. So this is one thing that I don't understand. Like you have to create this and then you need to check if this is set or not. If it's set, then you need to authenticate your... If it's set, then you don't need to authenticate your, your merchant. If it's not set, then you need to authenticate and move your merchant to the installation page. But it doesn't make any sense if you need to keep this or not. Especially if you're using custom session storage. This is one thing that I don't understand. But yeah, if you know something about this, just let me know in the comments below. Maybe yeah, that'll help me understand what this is for. So we can just go back in here, just install or just paste the variable here underneath of everything. And then inside of the create Shopify auth or after auth, we're going to use the... We're going to create a variable, and I think it's the um, the shop, and then the scope, and it's coming from the Shopify context. I think was I right? No, it's context, and then state, and then Shopify. Yeah. So state ctx dot state dot Shopify, and we can just indent all of this. And here, what we're going to do is to check. You know what, before we check, we need to use the active Shopify shops and we're going to use the shop. And for this, we're going to pass the scope like so. Hit save. Let's open our browser. And next up, we need to create the following router. You can just copy this, go back to VS Code and just paste that before the router here. So what's happening here is that once we access the root path, or the, yeah, the root path, we're going to check 
if the active Shopify shops is identified or an un unidentified or undefined or undefined or if it's undefined, undefined? If it's undefined, then we're going to redirect the merchant to the authentication. If it's defined, then we're going to use the handle request. So we can just save this. And I think we're almost done. We just need to use the port or listen. We can just copy this, go back to VS Code and just paste that underneath of the server that use like so. Save that and next up, let's open the package.json and set up our scripts. So we can just copy the dev, paste it underneath of the test, make sure that you add comma. Next up is for the build, let's copy this, paste below and lastly is for the start. Copy that, paste below like so and I think we're good now, we can just save this and then lastly we need to um, set up our app or we already did yeah we have the app url callback we have used the api key and secret key all right so let's just go back and we need to test our app open vs code and type npm all right here in the terminal type npm run dev all right so router is not defined router is not defined new router Oh, we forgot to require the router. So here, just type constant and then should be router. And then make sure they use require. And then should be Rekoa router. And that with semicolon. And let's just try it again. npm run dev. And there you go. We got no errors. Let's open our... And then let's just select select store. Uh, let's just test our app. Here we'll just select um, example development store. And there you go. So you can see now we're redirecting me to the authentication page. And then the auth will redirect us to the installation page. There you go. We can just install this. Install a listed app. And as you can see in the URL, it says that the, the shop is undefined. Now the reason why it's undefined is because here in our create Shopify auth after the after auth here in the after auth the redirect is redirecting us to the root path. So what you're gonna do is to concatenate or add a parameter so or a query variable so shop and then make sure that you concatenate the value of the variable shop. So it should be shop like so. We can just save this and let's just restart our server. All right, there we go. Let's open our browser. Let's close this and let's open our store because we installed it there. So we need to uninstall it. So it should be weekly how, no, not this one. Example development store. Let's open the apps. Let's just uninstall the node project. There we go. Let's open our app again. Select store. Let's select example development store. Click install listed app and it should redirect us again to the um, to the root path. But this time our merchant URL or our store URL is concatenated. There you go. Now the problem here is that it's redirecting us to the uh, the Angrok URL. So what are you going to do instead of redirecting us to that page or to that URL, you need to concatenate your shop URL or your merchant store URL. So here in the redirect, Honestly, let's not do it that way. Instead, I'm going to check if active, the Shopify shops is defined. If it's defined, then what I'm going to do, let me just fix this. I hate my keyboard. And inside of this condition, we can just copy this, paste it here. And instead of shop, we can just get rid of everything, honestly. Instead of that, we can just concatenate the shop variable. And then use the admin and then apps page. Otherwise, if it's not set, then we're going to redirect them to the root path. And the reason for that's because here we're using the root and then we're checking if this is undefined. If it's undefined, then we're directing the store or the merchant to the auth page. So that's pretty much it. We can just save this. Let's restart our server. 
npm run dev. Let's open our browser. And as you can see, now we have welcome. But we don't want to display that in the browser or the actual browser. We want to display that in the embed store. We can just close this. No, let's just wait. It's redirecting us to the um, apps page. There you go. So let's open the um, node project. And this time we should display welcome. And there you go, we have created a new Shopify app using the Koa Shopify Auth version 4. Now the next step they're going to take here is to set up your Shopify Polaris, your Next.js, your configurations for Next, and so on and so forth. So that's your next step, but that's pretty much it. That's how you create a Shopify app using Node and React using your Koa Shopify Auth version 4. Now, if you want to take my course, if you want to learn more, you can take my course. I'll put the link in the lesson description below. Otherwise, I'll probably make another video covering the Polaris for Koa Shopify Auth version 4 or for this, for this video. So let me know in the comments below and yeah, I'll do it. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribe for more Shopify app development videos. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.